Hello everyone! In this video you will learn how to use a simulation and I will show you the first steps you should probably take when you first start it. The easiest way to use a simulation is probably to use the Simulate Explosion tool. If you use this tool you can simply click on the map and you will see some detonations. Let's zoom in and you will see that if we change the yield of the detonation, detonation the extent of the physical effects changes and we can also select a preset warheads of the United States or another country that you have selected. So let's choose the B-41 with 25 megatons and detonate it over Berlin. Next you have to click the calculator button in order to calculate the effects on the population. You see the calculation is finished and now we can analyze the results. In this corner you will see the overall fatalities. We have almost 6 million fatalities in Germany, fatalities in Czech Republic and Belgium and Netherlands. You can use this panel to visualize different data. Green is the population density, blue and red is the fatalities density. These are the physical effects and you can change the uh, value that you want to visualize. Then here you see the extent of the fallout and here you see the extent of the fires. The color shows you the percentage of buildings that are burned out after the detonation. You can also change the map style from scenic to open street maps to see more details. And if you want to quickly create a complex scenario and don't want to click on the map for each detonation, you can simply increase the number of detonations for each click and increase the dispersion of the detonations. So every time you click on the map, there will be a large number of detonations and you can calculate the results. The other easy way to use a simulation is to simply replay the scenarios delivered with the simulation. After you start it, you will already see a scenario where most of the world's nuclear forces are available and all you have to do is click the play button. So now you will see a replay of an escalation scenario between the United States and Russia, which starts with a simple attack in the Black Sea close to Crimea, to which United States react, and you see an escalation to an all-out nuclear war. You can accelerate the time if you want to accelerate the simulation. So now you see the nuclear exchange, you see how military targets are destroyed, you see how civilian targets are attacked and after the scenario is finished you can again click the calculator button and calculate the effects on the population. Now the calculation is finished, we see the fatalities in countries that were affected by it and we can analyze the results by showing the fallout, fires, physical effects or casualties density. In addition to the large default scenario, there will be a number of scenarios delivered with a simulation. To access them, you can simply go to the main menu, load fixed scenario and here you can select one of the predefined scenarios. Let's select the delivery systems demo. You can see a description and we can load it in sandbox. This, this scenario demonstrates the different delivery systems that can be used in the simulation. Submarines, uh, aircraft, TLs and so on. If we go to the scenario editor we can see the two attack plans that are defined for this scenario and by clicking on them you can execute them. So now we see that 
aircraft is lifting off in direction North Korea. The submarines are firing their missiles and we can execute the attack plan for the North Korean forces and then they will attack South Korea and Japan. If you want a little bit more control, you can use the Quick Plan Execution tool. Let's select one of the countries by right-clicking on it. Let's select Russia. Select this tool. And now we can select the percentage of force that we want to use and the balance between military and civilian targets. And now we can simply click on one of the countries that we want to attack. We just clicked on United States. We can click on Germany, China, and you will see that attack plans are automatically generated and executed. The other easy way to quickly create some scenarios is to use the integrated artificial intelligence. To do this, we have to enable it by clicking on the brain button and then double clicking it to enable the AI for all countries and now we are acting as Russia and if we set off one detonation somewhere on the United States the United States will react to this will launch a small attack on Russia Russia will react to this attack and the conflict will escalate until all weapons are fired. If you want to have some more control over this escalation scenario creation you can go to Scenario Editor, to uh, Escalation Scenario Creation, and here you have two lists of countries for two sides of the conflict. You can click on countries that should participate on one side, let's say United Kingdom, France, United States, and on the other side, let's say it is Russia, China, and Pakistan, and North Korea. And now you can set the fraction of forces that the sides should use in this conflict. You can set the balance between military and civilian targets. And you can select the weights for different types of infrastructures that you want to be targeted. You can set the number of escalation steps and so on. We will delete the old plans. We now generate new plans and if we push the play button we will see that the units disperse and the conflict starts. So with this tool you can easily create such escalation scenarios with a little bit more control over which targets are targeted and how many units are used and how fast the escalation goes. And finally let me show you how you can create new types of warheads, missiles and units, how you can place them on the map and how you can create new scenarios. To create a new type of unit you have to go to the blueprints section and here you see available blueprints for different objects of the United States. Let's go to warheads. You see the list of different predefined warheads of the United States. If you select one of them, you see a picture, the description, the yield and so on. If you want, you can change them and you can create new ones. 
the same for ballistic missiles. And now let's say we want to create uh, ballistic missiles, um, but with a lot of warheads. Let's say we want to create a new missile with 50 warheads. Let's call it Titan 40, 42. Let's remove all the existing warheads. Let's place new warheads on it. Let's put 50 in here. Uh, let's save it. And now we want to create a silo where we can place these missiles. Titan 42, we drag it in, we save it. And now we have a new silo with, fifth, uh, with one Titan 42 missile with 50 warheads. So let's place this on the map. To do this, we go to the construction menu. Here we have to select uh, silo control centers. We select uh, launch control center, our new missile, and we can place it on the map. So now we see the ICBM fields. We can select them and we can give them targets. Let's go to the other side of the world. We can click on the map. You see the uh, MERV footprint where you can put uh, the warheads. Um, if you want to target military uh, units, you can hold control and the target will stick to the objects. What you can also do is uh, use automatic targeting. You can go to counter value targeted. So first you have to select all the missiles, then go to counter value, add Russia to the list of targeted countries, distribute warheads, done. Now we see that all the missiles are targeted and we are done. So now we have a new plan, plan A. <clears throat> we can go and visualize it. We see that the missiles will follow these trajectories and release a very large number of warheads. And we can execute this um, scenarios by pushing this button. And if you want, you can save this scenario for later use. If you go to main menu, save scenario, and you can give it a name, plan R, and you save it as sandbox. And now if we go to scenario editor, you see here is our plan A and we can execute it. What you can also do is you can simply select a unit, give it targets and execute instantly. You can also use the simulation to estimate the effects of on human individuals like yourself, your family and your friends. To do this you have to go to this menu where you see a list of all the individuals in the simulation. Right now it's only me and I am in Stuttgart. You can add new people by clicking the new button, then clicking a couple of times on the map 
And now you can change the names of these people. Let's call it Mark. You can select a profile picture and you can save all in order to make the changes permanent. So all these individuals will be saved on your hard drive. And every time you execute a different scenario, you will be able to see the effects of different scenarios on this group of people. So to demonstrate the effects, let's use the single detonation um, tool and let's set off a detonation somewhere close to my location. So now you see that my chance of uh, survival is 81%. You see the list of different physical effects, uh, overpressure thermal radiation, ionizing radiation, and a description of my injuries. Let's set off a couple of detonations to the south to demonstrate the effects of the fallout. Let's set off one here and a couple of here. So we see that the fallout is now moving direction south and at some point it will arrive at my location. We can observe the uh, dose rate at my location. Right now there is some radiation from the first detonation, but it decreases because it m moves away or the fallout is decaying. And we can accelerate it and see what will happen next. What we can also do is select my shelter. Right now I'm in the open, but we can use a vehicle. We can use some of the buildings like a basement. Let's say we go to a basement and we will see that the dose rate I receive drops. If I now go back on foot again, I can try to escape the radiation uh, by moving. Let's say I set a destination. Now I will be moving on the map, but the fallout will arrive at my location soon and you will see that my chances of survival will decrease. So with this tool you can estimate the chances of survival for different individuals that you care about and you can uh, plan different evacuation strategies in case of a conflict. I hope that this video was helpful and you now can quickly get started using the simulation. Thank you for your attention.